the Word of God to the book of uh, Luke, St. Luke chapter 14, please. St. Luke chapter 14. You know, when, how many of you have gotten the invitations like uh, Christmas parties or graduations or weddings or something really important? We've all had invitations. You know, when somebody sends you an invitation to come, that means you are very special, specially wanted, right? Yeah. And always, RSVP, are you going to respond, all right? Because everybody has a choice. Well, I'm preaching this morning on an invitation to come, an invitation to come. And most of us have already accepted that invitation to come, and that's to come to Jesus. But I think there's some things here we ought to see, that Jesus wants everybody to extend out that invitation. So I'm going to read from uh, 14th chapter of, of St. Luke, a very uh, familiar, wonderful passage of Scripture. And this is from Jesus. In verse 16, And he said unto them, a certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, uh, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And then the master of the house, being angry, said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in thither the poor and the maim, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Invitation to come, come to that great supper. God is, is, has a great marriage supper of the lamb and he's bidding his bride to come and we who are saved by the grace of god will be experiencing that that marriage supper on this earth with the lord jesus in person when he completes his second coming Amen. It's something to dream about and to look forward to. But in the meanwhile, God's trying to build his kingdom down here and getting ready for that kingdom age. And what's going to happen there depends on what we do down here, okay? He wants to reach the world for Christ before the rapture and before death claims any more souls to go to the regions of the damned. So this is a challenge to us to listen to what this invitation that God says for a few moments and let's get involved in this great invitation to come, a great invitation to come. And when you invite people to come to Christ, it's because of your love. And that love is what's going to draw them, not confrontational, but that love. Let's pray and I'll preach. Heavenly Father, I pray you bless the word of God that's been read. Open our, open our ears and our minds and, and speak to our hearts, Lord, that we will let the seed of the word of God about the great commission, the great command, the great invitation to come would be written on the, like a pen on the table of our hearts, that we wouldn't miss any opportunities to reach whoever, wherever they are to you. I pray now that you'd use this sermon as you would see fit, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. I think it's an amazing thing that the Prince of Glory, the creator of all things, our Savior, our Lord, our Master, 
reached down and spoke to me one day. He provided everything. It's free to you who will open your heart and receive it because the price has already been paid. And we're going to be seeing the birth of Jesus and, and later in Easter time, the resurrection and what he did to synchronize everyone's salvation. But that takes the love of God to think that God himself, and we're going to see that invitation to come this morning in a great way. But he wants everyone. He prepared everything. He sent his servants out. You and I are the only servants that God has to send out in our day and our time. We need to go. We need to go out. We need to give, give out the wonderful word. Invite folks to, the, to this great to this great supper that God's already prepared as he's building his kingdom to get others to come into that kingdom. And he sent the servants out at supper time. That was the time that it was all ready. And say to them that were bidden, come. There's the invitation from Jesus. Come, for all things are now ready. And you know, that's the terminology that the Bible uses about being saved, that now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. It may be today, but it's not today. It is right now when God speaks to your heart that you can be redeemed. And then and then only, you can't get saved whenever you make up your mind. It takes the drawing power of the Holy Spirit of God to, to synchronize the truth of the Word of God to your heart for you to have that faith to believe and to receive. And whoever will open their mind and open their heart and say yes to God, he doesn't have a no for you. He only has a yes. He said, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. God wants to save everybody. And that depends upon us giving out the word. That's God's formula. The word of God is given out by, by human instrumentality. The spirit of God incorporates the conviction and the drawing power of the word of God to their heart. And now they can, they can exercise faith to call upon the Lord and to trust him and to come into salvation. And that's the great call. That's the greatest invitation anybody could ever give. And everyone has a choice. You notice when the servants went out, they, they all with one consent began to make excuses. Let me tell you, if you're an unsaved person listening, your excuses will never stand before God. They're going to be just as feeble as these excuses here. One, one said, uh, uh, I, I bought a piece of ground and I meet needs must go see it. Well, listen, it's not a wise thing to go purchase some land that you've never even seen yet, right? You go ahead and buy your share in Florida and it may be right in the middle of a swamp with the alligators and the snakes and, the, and, all, and all the destruction. Okay, I've known folks who flew to Florida and it was swamp land. Scam, okay? Okay, so what, what a lame excuse. And, uh, and another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I need to prove them. Hello, uh, why would you ever buy five yokes, yoke of oxen if, if they weren't proven? That was a bad investment, right? You need to prove everything, see? That's just a lame excuse. Now, this third one, he had the best excuse of all. He said, I married a wife and therefore I cannot come. Amen? And that's the best excuse of the feeble one. But let me tell you something. Every person, no matter what religion you're raised in, what your philosophies are, who you're married to, what your ethnical background is, what your religious background is, you need to come to the Word of God and find the only way of salvation to make sure you go to heaven it's not about religion. It's about knowing Jesus Christ in your heart. And so the servant, the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Now, I'm going to save this to the very last because this is what 
I'm endeavoring for us to do, and that's to go out of the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in, tell them about Temple Baptist Church, go pick them up, t take them out to McDonald's, do something to get them in the house of God. Amen? You know, we, God will bless what we do, not what we think or what we pray for or what we hope for. He blesses what we do. All right? It's doing the word of God, doing the commandments of God. So with that thought of mine, I'd like to go back to start with uh, to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, my life's verse that's, that's broke down more barriers and seen more people saved to come to the, uh, to the saving knowledge of Christ because those three barriers are there because when you just invite folks to church, they, they know what you're up to, unsaved people. They don't want to come to your church. They know, especially if it's a Baptist church, they know they're going to hear the truth from the Bible most of the time. So church could be, you, know, you, you do not meet your responsibility to God for, for releasing your responsibility to lost souls God puts you in touch with unless you tell them how to know to be saved. Church invitation is a church invitation. It's not necessarily an invitation for them to come to Jesus. So with that, with that thought in mind, religion is a barrier. You are a barrier. Who are you to tell anybody anything? Who am I to tell anybody? So uh, our, our personality is a barrier within itself. Well, who are you to tell me? I believe this, you believe that. Well, keep what you believe to yourself. I'll keep what I believe to myself. You know, that, that kind of a thing. You got to take yourself out of the picture. You got to take the church out of the picture. And you got to take religion out of the picture. There's hardly a religion that I can think of that I haven't won somebody to Christ in. Uh, with, with, other, with, with, other, with other things. Uh, I, God says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's what God says. Now I want to tell you the power, the power of just that words. Because on that track, reasoning with God, this is the, 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 the verse that's on there. I was in Cincinnati, Ohio in a soul winning conference and me and the associate pastor was knocking on doors and uh, presenting the reason with God track. We went up to this, this door and uh, knocked on it and just we started to knock, the door opened and this, this, uh, this young man came out. He, he looked like he was probably in his 30s or maybe early 40s. He was starting to leave. And I, I said, oh, I said, we just, uh, we've just been knocking on some doors. And I have a little, tr a little track right here that I, I would like to just take a minute to hand you one and, and tell you what's on it. And he said, I don't have much time. I'm just on, on my way out. I said, it won't take but just a minute. He said, okay. So he, there he stands with his, with his foot still in his storm door out on the porch I opened up a reasoning with God track. I said, now, I want you to understand something. We're not here to invite you to church. I'm not discussing religion, and I'm not giving you no, no message from me. This comes from God. This scripture comes from God out of heaven to give everyone that reads it peace in their heart. And I read, I read that first little statement that I'm preaching from now. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He looked at me. His eyes began to fill with tears. I said, what's your name? He said, Johnny Bench. We laughed later, not the Johnny Bench, but his name was Johnny Bench. And he stopped me at this verse, and he began to weep, and he said, are you telling me that anything that I've done, the sin I've committed, can be forgiven? 
I said, yes, Johnny, that's exactly what I'm here to tell you. He let me take him right to the track, and Johnny opened his heart and got saved right on his front porch. The scripture has power. It has power. And God knows that we need forgiveness. Isn't it amazing that God himself, the Father, would give this invitation? Come. Now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. And that was the key to help me to break down all of the barriers that stopped me from winning souls. Because I would start with church, and church is a, no, no, I, well, well, what's your religious background? And that leads to an argument. Well, then if I got to, to me trying to convince him anything, well, who are you to tell me what I ought to believe? And so I just, uh, God gave me the wisdom when I prayed for this verse just to take myself out of the picture by saying, first of all, I'm not here to invite you to church. And I'm not discussing religion. One man said, well, what are we going to talk about then? I said, I'm not going to. I didn't come to tell you anything. Well, who is this nut standing on my door, knocking on my door, and he's not going to invite me to church, and he's not discussing religion, and he didn't come to tell me anything. I said, let me tell you, I'm here for one reason. I've got something right here from God to your heart. Wow. With love, it breaks down all the barriers. You can't begin talking about church and talk about all that stuff. You can be friendly with people so they know you're a friendly person. But, you know, let's get right down to the business. God said, you come. He says this to everyone. You come right now and reason together with me, saith the Lord. That's not me and the person. That's them and God. And if you'll get that on your heart, you'll never feel rejected. Because they never reject you if they say no a hundred times. They're rejecting the King of kings and the God of glory. They're rejecting him. So God says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. I want us to go over to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. These are the words of Jesus. Now, you got God the Father saying, come now, and let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. And now you got Jesus, the Son of God, that performed salvation with, with, uh, right to the very end. In verse 28, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, there's no heavier burden on planet earth than for a person to know if they died, they would be in hell because their sin is not forgiven. And once people, preachers, stop preaching about sin, people don't see the need any longer to be saved. Oh, God, give us preachers that will preach on sin and the results of it. And God, give us more preachers that will preach on, on the invitation to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy and laden. God said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Revelation chapter 22, let's go back to the last book in the, in, in, in the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, and let's look at verse 16 and 17. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And he's testifying this in the churches. Hey, we're together with God today in a church that needs to give out that great 
that great invitation to come. And God didn't leave us a, an option to, to, to not do it. He said in Acts 1, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, where in Jerusalem and Judea and all of Samaria and the outermost parts of the world. We're to witness to everyone we can. And so he said, I'm testifying in the church these things. And look at verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Now you've got God the Father giving out the invitation. Now you've got Jesus Christ saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am lowly, meek. My burden is light, and it will lighten the load. There's Jesus giving that invitation. And the very first thing after the, in the testimony to the churches that's listed, and the spirit and the bride say come. All right, I want to talk about that for a moment. And the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is what's going to say come. All right? Because without him saying come, without his drawing power, knowing that what you're giving out is from God, and it is truth to their life, then the Spirit of God convicts them. The Spirit of God draws them. The Spirit of God interprets the Scripture to their heart. The Spirit of God lets them see the need to be saved. How do you be saved? Faith to be saved comes by hearing, not seeing so as they hear the word of God, the spirit of God ministers to their heart. Now they have an opportunity to say yes to God. When the church isn't an issue, religion isn't an issue, the person like you witnessing is no longer an issue. And the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God does the work. We are only instruments of love in the hand of God to deliver souls from the regions of the damned. That's who we are, and that's what we're to be doing. And so the, the Spirit says, come. So now you've got the, the full Trinity giving out the great invitation to come. You've got God the Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit. The, the bride says, and the Spirit says, come, and the bride says, come. Now, who's the bride? Saved people are the bride. Did you know that? He's referred to as the bridegroom and we're the bride. That's why in, in Jeremiah, when the, the, the bride was turning away, the people of God was going away, he says, turn you backsliding children. He said, for I'm married unto you. And you know, in the eyes of God, marriage is forever. It's not a temporary thing. In the eyes of God, salvation is forever. It's not a temporary thing. Whatever God does, he does it forever that men may fear before him. And so the bride says, come. That's you. That's me. Are you saying come? Are you saying come? And before you say come to church, well, that's okay too. I'm going to show you from the Bible. It's okay to say come to church, but not before you say come to Jesus. Okay? You say come to Jesus because I tell you what, anyone, they'll come to church for handouts. But if they come to church and we can't pay their electric bill, and we can preach to them and get Jesus in their heart. God's got their electric bill. Amen? God's got it. And you can give people something great. If being saved is great for you, it's great for everybody. 
If unsaved people could just realize how wonderful it is to be a Christian, they wouldn't stay lost any longer. They would say, now is a good time. Now is the time I want my life changed. Now is the time I want the burden of sin rolled away. Now is the time I want to be a believer. Okay? And so the bride says, come. Or who else says, come? Let him that hears say, come. Oh, yeah, you tell somebody else and they say, man, this is great. Like Johnny Bench left that, that porch floating on cloud nine with tears still running down his face, rejoicing that Jesus forgave his sins after that prayer. He was just like all of that guilt and shame, and I don't know. I never even asked and, and, and wouldn't anyway uh, what was troubling him so heavy about the sin that he knew just by looking in our faces and looking at the track of a scripture, that conviction came all over him. Do you mean I can be forgiven? Yeah. He was still rejoicing. And you know what? I, I, who knows? Johnny might be a preacher right now. Who knows how many others Johnny's helped and any of the others we lead to Christ. That's going to be the greatest rewards when we stand before God one day, when we see this great big throng of people robed in white, and we say, Lord, God said, I'm going to show you a reward. He put his arm around you, walk out. And God said, see this? And you look, and here's all these people robed in white. Well, these are the fruits of your reward. Oh, Lord, I didn't think you made mistakes. I did win that many. No, you didn't. You won this little few over here, but they won these, and these won these, and these won these. And you know, Amway doesn't have no monopoly upon the system of multiplication, amen. God had it a long time before Amway did. They were smart enough to know what God designed works, amen. <laughs> what God designed works. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These are the fruits of your rewards. You'll never know till you get to heaven and see the multitudes of what God took, what few you did, and what few you won, and let it multiply, spread. Spread the good news. Spread the seeds of the word of God. Now, I told you I'm going to show you in closing. I'm going to go back to our scripture. So he made, he made the supper. He bade many to come. He's building his kingdom, but he's also building his church because his church is where his servants serve to make up the bride. All right? So let's look at verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the, about the excuses of the lame, okay? And the master was angry. Now, you know what? I don't think God was angry at the servant because they didn't come. Uh, uh, or, or the people that didn't come. That's their choice. God, was, the, the master wasn't angry about that. He was angry about the servants taking their excuses not to do what he told them to do. He was angry, I believe, at the servants that come back and accept those lousy excuses. So what did God say? How do you know that? Because God says this, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city. All right? Go out quickly. Don't, don't waste no time and don't give up and don't back off. And don't be discouraged because somebody said no. For everyone that says no, there's millions out there that will say yes. So quickly, don't waste any time. Get back out into the highways and the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in who? The poor 
and the maim and the halt and the blind. Oh, listen, some churches just want want members to come in that's got the husband and the wife and the teenagers and the little baby and got a great big job giving big tithes. Boy, that's a premier. Listen, God wants everybody saved. God wants the poor saved. God wants the the maimed and and the lame and the halt. And God wants the blind reached. No respect of persons with God in the sanctuary. Go out quickly and get these. Oh, you wonder why they didn't go ahead and get that group and try to bring them in. Was that a group they just passed over? Or maybe maybe the master wouldn't be pleased if I brought a blind man. Maybe someone that was crippled and have to wheel them in in a wheelchair or maybe maybe this. Where there are other people out there with legs and money and good things, we can reach good. After all, a soul is a soul. No, every soul is important to God. Amen. And God forbid that we don't bring in the poor and the lame and the maim and the halt and the blind. He said, go out there into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. That compels a strong word. I think I've told you this story before. I think it bears repeating when uh, I pastored the Tri-City Baptist Church in Lincoln Park, our we, we, we bought a building there that had a warehouse in the back, a big steel door in the back. We made a nice auditorium there. I'd be preaching away, and I'd someone come down the alley right behind our church in a paved parking lot right to the side. And bang, 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 bang. While I was preaching, everybody, oh, who's knocking at the door, you know. I, that went on for about two or three Sundays in a row right in the middle of my hottest spot to preaching. And I met with the men. I said, what are we going to do about that? Somebody knocking at the door. I had a very uh, tall, strong, young deacon named Walter. Walter said, Pastor, don't worry about it. I got it covered. I said, okay. Okay. So Walter got him a chair and sat right by the back door. I was preaching, bang, bang, bang. He opened that door, shot out. Boy, he disappeared. Didn't even shut the door. Just a little bit later, about five minutes later, I saw Walter coming in the front of the building with a young man by the collar, and he brought him over, and he sat down. His face was red, and he was embarrassed. And no, he did, he did not get saved. He left the church begruntled. And after it was over, I said, Walter, what happened? He said, well, he took off this way, and he said, I, I tackled him out on the parking lot. He said, now, there's one of three things, that you, the choices you've got to make. He says, Right, right now, I can call the police and have you to go, go to jail for, for, uh, for interrupting a worship service. He said, or I can take my fist and beat your face in right here. Or you can come into the church and hear my preacher that you disturbed preach. I'll, I'll take the preacher. <laughs> Brought him in. No, Walter didn't get saved. But I laughed. I said, that's strong, compelling, Walter. (laughs) I wouldn't always suggest that. But, you know, we ought not to be embarrassed to ask people to come to church. Jesus wants people to come to church. You know, if they do, if they come here, they're going to hear the word of God the way it is. And they'll have an opportunity. And we don't tell anybody what to do or anything about that. But we need to compel people, not just a general invitation, 
you need to really be sincere with love to tell people, if you come here, you, you're going to meet God. If you're already saved and you know him, you're going to be blessed. All right? So let's begin to, to, to reach those that are saved uh, to come, and let's begin to witness to those that aren't coming to Christ to come to him. Both of those things are, are right in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord in final said, go out into the highways and the hedges, compel them to come in. Why? That my house might be filled. What are we going to do with what we've heard today? What are you going to do about it? Without people, there's problems. With people, there's still problems. But they're good ones. Amen? I'd like to have some of the good problems. Like we're running out of room. We put more seats out and they're all filling up. It's getting a little bit crowded and no longer can house a crowd. Well, that's when God will put something together to give you a bigger building and a place and God will do all of that. Those are good problems to have. But you know what? God looks here today and I learned a long time ago never to get upset about any empty seat that's here because I say, I'm glad for you, you and you and everyone that's sitting in these seats. I am thrilled beyond all measure that you're here today because it's not up to man to build the church. If Ron Dobbs builds the church, it will not be builded. Unless God builds the church, it won't be built. The only way God will build the church is if we, his people, touch, get in touch with him and let God build the church through our labors and our energies and our efforts. I don't know why at this late time in my life, I stand back before you today as a pastor because that's what God ordained. And I don't know how much longer I'll, I'll be here as long as God wants me. This is a great church. But let me tell you, let's pray because God's got a great future for this church. But the need of desperation right now for the Lord, and I'm not talking about for me, I'm talking about for the Lord. Because God's going to take care of you. God's going to take care of me no matter what. But I'm talking about the need of the Lord today as God looks down. God needs people. God needs finances. God needs his ministry to be vibrant and full of love. Let's bow for prayer. Let's stand to our feet, those of you that can.